Yo, how's it going, boys? We're back to the video. And this time I'm coming back to uh, update, perhaps, or I don't know, show another version of uh, how to hold BC operators. Uh, I was asked if I could do like a follow up video to this. And I, it's, it's, it's kind of hard because I don't play these scenarios like you guys do. Because you guys get it. I know you guys get it easily once a day, once a week, probably. But uh, as for me, I rarely encounter this. And then I happened to play rough in the uh, ESL Cup this, this past Monday. And uh, he did some PC memes and we shut it down super easily. So I wanted to show you guys what that looks like. So I, I just skipped a bit of the early game. It was a bit weird. Pretty much this is all I've seen from my opponent. So it looks like he's going to two factories, Magfield Cyclone. That's what it looks like here, which he is. Um, And then he's about to go for the BCs right now. And I'm playing very standard. If you see, I'm going five racks, one starport, one factory. Got my third base coming up. And yeah, so let's get started here. So tells it fair. So you can imagine there was some sort of weird cheese going on. He drops the fusion core there. And then at this point here, I'm assuming he's just playing ground mech. Uh, obviously, you know, when you're playing against my players, you kind of already have your suspicions oftentimes. So it's like sometimes you can just kind of guess what it is that they're going to go for next, right? Here he scans me. Then I do a follow-up scan because I'm, want to, I'm about to take my third now. And this is around the time people start adding extra production. And they also want to see more or less how far along his third is compared to mine. In this case, there's two star ports and a fusion core. So this is a tough one because as a mech Terran, you really cannot afford two factory production and two star port production if you're building battle cruisers plus cyclones or tanks. So he kind of has to cut one, which is gonna, which you're gonna see is gonna, it's gonna be the factory units in favor of the BC unit. So what I do first here is I go to eBay. You're gonna see me add two starports in a couple of minutes here, a couple of seconds even. Um, first I'm gonna push this back because I want to take my third. Just use my tanks to leapfrog forward, and then I'm still building bi units. I'm building mostly marines because I know that the BCs are coming, and really what I need right now are marines as opposed to marauders. Here, I'm going to do this push for a couple of reasons. Number one, I want to delay the third. BCs do take a long time to build, and this is the only army that Ruff has. Um, and I know it's kind of hard to navigate Magfield Cyclones. Like, you know, me, I could probably pick up one of these tanks if I had the medevac close enough and it beat the lock on and I saved the tank. But I don't know if you guys, it's not as easy. But um, if you can, try to get a nice push out like this. I still lose the tank anyway. And I actually kill this base because, like I mentioned earlier, mech players. They cannot afford two BCs and two factory units at the same time. So he builds two tanks and then two fat two BCs. And now he can build. If he builds two tanks again, he won't have enough gas to build two BCs when these BCs are done. So I'm going to get this third for free because he tried to take it with no units. So you want to, that's what you want to be thinking about. Like mech players at your guys' level are going to try to take bases with like no units at all. So if your macro is even somewhat decent like this and you have an army, you could definitely punish them for trying to take it too quickly. Now behind this, of course, I'm only building Marines because I know what's happening, which is the BC, which are the BCs. And I'm not adding an extra star port and I've started reactor Viking, okay? So I didn't build, I built one more medevac. Actually should have been two more medevacs. And then now I've come with the Vikings here. If you notice, I didn't have two across the map. I kept all my Marines at home. So naturally he jumps into my natural, or my main, my main, sorry. And then my Marines come in with the Vikings. Now this is, this is the hardest part, right? Because you have to defend it initially. I probably could have built a cyclone to help with this a little bit more. Which in hindsight I think is a great idea, um, just so you have something besides just Marines, because as you can see I can't really kill the battle cruisers here, and they are getting value. But fortunately I'm still macroing, I'm adding extra star ports, and it's it's complete. And you can see here what I'm talking about, right? No, he didn't have a second wave of factory units in favor of two more BCs. Nice and add an armory. So knowing that my macro is way better, knowing that I have a third already mining and my opponent doesn't. It's really easy for me to just go straight into the air, right? Here I'm going to have two starport Viking production. I want to have more gas, then I'm going to add a tech lab, add another starport, and then I'll do Ravens and Vikings. Here I add a couple of turrets. The turrets, don't put, don't place too much emphasis on the turrets. Like two per mineral line is completely fine, or even two per base. You just don't, you don't want to build so many because then when you build too many, it's just so many, so many minerals for turrets that are just going to get Yamatoed by like five BCs anyway. Here he's implementing, here he's putting extra money into this defense, planetary, 
All right, and you can see all this stuff is really hard to afford. Like, he has actually no money at all. Okay, so he's really relying on the BCs doing damage on your side of the map. And if you take the bait, what you'll end up doing is you'll end up attacking into them too early. And they'll defend with their eight tanks and one planetary. And then on, across the map, they'll kill you with, your, with their BCs. All right, and that, that's super annoying. So the way we're going to counter that out is first I'm going to chill. I'm gonna, I know the BCs are going to come. So I set up sensor tower. I take some map vision. Here I have to, uh, to deal with the BCs. But um, here's another star port tech lab. Fact, uh, extra command center. Once these BCs teleport, I have an opportunity to attack. So what ends up happening is right here, he teleports all of them, right? He teleports all of them, and I have three, nearly four, I have four starports worth of, of production, which means I can push out with this, and then whatever is coming out of my starports now are going to stay home. It's going to stay home to defend any potential counterattack. And now my goal is to siege him with some of my tanks. Now, here, if you notice this tank positioning, this isn't... this isn't necessarily optimal per se, right? Like maybe it'd be, it would be better for him to put them here to defend this. The issue is again, he just doesn't have enough tanks, right? He's been spending so much of his gas on the BCs, the extra star port, the double upgrades that he can't actually afford to defend two places at once. So you want to scan, you want to see, you have to be really patient about which angle you can really abuse the siege tanks, which in this case is going to be here, right? Because I can actually hit his gas production. There he's the tank, now I'm hitting his gas, which is gonna hurt him so much because he needs gas. Right. There I matrix it. And look, what does he do? He sends the BCs for the counter, right? That would make sense. But we already know that this is the move that they're gonna make. So we made sure we kept everything at home. And now maybe the only thing I could have done better is added a sensor tower here just a bit faster to pick up on the BCs. So now I'm shelling this down. Killing a couple of BCs there. He teleports them back. Here, now I can do exactly, I can send all these actually forward if I wanted to. In this case, I was still playing it safe and I didn't want to do that. I see him trying to take a fourth. Same thing here. Look at this. Not enough tanks, right? He has two tanks to defend the planetary. He tries to move tanks up here to defend this one, but he can't because I just have, I've been building enough bio to actually contest the tanks, right? Now, I've killed a fourth. I have my own fourth. I'm taking two more bases. So now... I'm going to have more gas than him. Now, because I'm going to have more gas than he he's going to have gas, right? He can't even afford BCs. Look at that. I am gonna I can actually afford not only double upgrade, but I can afford to build BCs of my own, which is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to build BCs of my own. I'm going to build like four to eight of my own BCs. And it's literally just so that I can kill turrets and tanks and all that, all that jazz. Like I'm going to have better upgrades. I'm going to have more production because I have way more gas than my opponent. And instead of just trying to int into a planetary right now with mass marine and try to win, I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to build my own BCs. I'm going to take a chill. And I'm, I'm just going to keep an eye on that fourth base. That's it. So, again, just going to chill. Raven Viking. Add some battle cruisers. There you go. One battle cruiser. Another battle cruiser. There you go. I caught these down here. So, let's catch so I'm chilling here. Now, again, something that I could be doing better right now is giving myself vision. And you can see I start adding a sensor tower. I actually scan here to try to see if I could catch the BCs, right? Because it could only come from here or here. But my Vikings are closer to my main than they are here. So that's why it makes sense for me to check here. But in general, like what you can do is just spam sensor towers across the map, just going down the middle. Or put random spotter turrets. If you watch my original video, I talk about that as well. And then when you do that kind of stuff, you can catch the BCs way ahead of time. And then you're chilling. Here, I take my fifth. Now, I'm going to try to multi-prong here. I was hoping he'd recall the BC or teleported the BCs here, but instead he was closer to his fourth. So he kills that. But now I'm just going to keep taking bases like I mentioned. And now when I now that I'm maxed out and I have my own BCs here, I'm going to attack. So that ends up, that's what end, ends up happening here. He sneaks the BCs again. Um, I sent a turret to build a SCV to build a turret. So I end up building sensor tower here, sensor tower here, sensor tower here. And I'm trying to have infinite vision. Here you go. Once I force this back and I max out, all the BCs have gone home. And now I have this insane sky mech army. A literally Viking Raven BC. You model the turrets like I mentioned. And then I, I, I just have more, right? Like at the end, I just have way more than my opponent. Um, I need more gas. As you can see. And he's just going to fall apart here. And that's it. 
So this is, for me, this is the easiest way to, to deal with this. Going bio and trying to, you know, take down these planetary bases with like eight tanks is really annoying. Um, and just going for my own sky mech while they're playing really defensive, trying to trying to counter my bio play. I just transition into air behind it. And because I have more gas than they do, it's just way easier for me to build way more stuff than them and a better army than they can, um, even though they started off playing mech, funny enough. And that's how I do it. So this is pretty much how I always approach these mass BC people. Uh, I know this isn't like BC ground mech per se, because some people do that with like the Thors and some of BCs and stuff like that. Uh, but if you're struggling with mass BC or people who go two factory into mass BC, uh, this is a great way to do about it. And I feel like it doesn't really take too much. Um, what's the word? I don't know, like APM or like or like micro or anything like that. Just super simple strategy um, and minimizing the counter BC damage. And yeah. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Let me know if you find this one a bit more helpful than my original video. And um, I'll be back for more. See you around.